So the, these are the same objectives that we had in Algebra 2. And honestly, the second one, I mean, I think they're taking it out of Algebra 2 for next year, that it's not it's not an SOL anymore. And I, I kind of question a little bit, you know, why it was ever so important, but... You know, it's a short lesson as it is. There's only 15 slides. So we'll go ahead and do them both. We'll solve the quadratic formula, and we'll do this thing called the, determ the discriminant. The discriminant is something that actually comes up later. You know, somewhere down the road, you end up taking something more like a college algebra, pre calculus -y kind of thing. Um, you'll do what they call conic sections. The conic sections are circles and ellipses and parabolas and hyperbolas. And the discriminant can come up in that, too. I mean, it's actually not the same discriminant, but it's b it's the same b squared minus 4ac that is the discriminant here. Okay. So, the one thing... Let me pause. Yeah. So, actually, in terms of... In the Algebra 2 SOL, completing the square is in there. I mean, you may not remember doing completing the square, but it's actually part of the Algebra 2 SOL. But actually, the only thing they say you're responsible for is that you should know that this quadratic formula that we're about to use today actually comes from completing the square. This is the, the derivation of it here. You know, First, you start with the standard form quadratic equation. You don't have to copy this, right? It's just, to, just you can see where this comes from. You know, we know what we did when we had a number other than one there. We divided everything by that number. So that's what they did to get to this point, right? And they moved the, they moved the constant term to the other side. Um, they had to figure out what goes in this position here, and then whatever they added there, they added there. Um, then they write it in, a, you know, this is a perfect square trinomial here. And note, see how they get the common denominator here? This one's missing a 4a. So that's where the 4ac comes from, because you multiply by 4a over 4a. And then you take the square root of both sides, right? So this side, you just get the x plus b over 2a. This side, um, you take the square root, but the square root of 4a squared is 2a. That you can do. The b squared minus 4ac stays. Then when you subtract the b over 2a to, both, to that side, you get what we already know. That's quadratic formula. Say, you know, my dad was an engineer. He's an electrical engineer. And he worked into his 60s or so. And then he's like staying at home, you know, certainly not exercising his brain as much as he did when he was working. And one time he wrote me, a, it, it might have been around 2003 or something when I was, uh, or, or maybe it was closer to 2005 when I started teaching. And he said, you know, every once in a while, he likes to sit down and just do this on his own, just to like see if he could remember it. I mean, he's in his 60s. He hasn't done this since high school. And he couldn't remember it anymore. So I had to like type it up and send him this thing. This is how you, this is how you find the quadratic formula. And whenever I'd go home after that, you know, I'd see that document. You know, it'd be, it was printed out and it was just sitting there in the same place every year. It's still there. Anyways. But. Quadratic formula. Did anybody go to the NASA thing this weekend? NASA had an open house. It was like a 100-year anniversary of NASA Langley, I think. Last year, when I was at TAB, I had parents that worked at NASA. And when we were doing this quadratic stuff, the guy wrote me back and said, this is this good stuff. You know, He says, we still use this. Even at NASA, the engineers, they're still using this kind of thing. So here is the quadratic formula. Right. The quadratic formula, first of all, you're not going to try to use it unless you've got the standard form quadratic equation equals zero. Right. Then from there, you can pick out what are the values of a, b, and c. Right. a is the coefficient of the squared term, b is the coefficient of x to the first, and c is the constant. And you just plug it in like that.
So let's let's practice using the quadratic formula. So what do I have to do to this one so that I can use the quadratic formula? I need to subtract 2. It needs to have a 0 on one side. All right, so rewrite it. 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so what are the values of a, b, and c? a is 3, b is negative 5, and c is negative 2. Okay, so we plug, plug and chug, as they say. x equals negative negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, five, of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 2. All over 2 times 3. So simplify. x equals 5 plus or minus the square root. And when you're simplifying this stuff, you got to be careful because we still make this mistake all the time. What is negative 5 squared? Positive 25. If you just put it in your calculator, negative 5 squared, without parentheses, it'll be wrong. It'll tell you negative 25. Right? We shouldn't make that mistake anymore. 25. And then negative, it's minus... But 4 times 3 times negative 2 is going to be a negative number, so minus a negative, this will be a plus. And 4 times 3 times 2 is 24. Divided by 6. So x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 6. Okay, well, square root of 49... That's a perfect square. What if, is that a miracle or what? You know, when you when you see that your square root is like a perfect square, what it means is the equation that you solved is it was factorable. You may not have been able to think of the factors, but it was factorable. Um, so what do, what do we do with this plus or minus now? You're gonna have to do it twice, right? You're gonna have to do x equals 5 plus 7 over 6, and x equals 5 minus 7 over 6. So this one is 12 over 6, which is 2. This one is negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 third. Right. So could you take those two solutions? and turning it into the factors and factor that equation? If if 2 is one of the answers, what has to be one of the factors? x minus 2. Right? It had to have an x minus 2 in it because when you plug in a 2, you get 2 minus 2 is 0. Right? That's how that works. Okay, well, if I tried to do the same thing with the minus 1 third, what I end up, would end up with is x minus negative one-third, which is x plus one-third. Now, if I foiled that, would I get 3x squared minus 5x? No, I wouldn't get that. But if you remember the slide and divide thing, if I just take that 3 and slide it right there, okay, then, what I, then I would have then I would have 3x plus 1 times x minus 2. And that would be the right factoring. Okay. So here we go. Here's your u try. Just a second.
right? So you should have gotten four thirds negative one. Oh, I'm all sorry. You couldn't see any of that. How many got it? Okay. No, no. If it says solve the equation to solve, find the values back. Okay, so here's enough. The next wrinkle. So what do I have to do to start this one? Yeah, or or you could. I would prefer because if I if I move the two x squared, I got three negative numbers. Yeah, I'd rather make them three positive numbers than three negative. So how about we add them to the left? Okay, x equals negative six plus or minus the square root of six squared minus four times 2 times 7 divided by 2 times 2. Okay, so now it looks like we have to take the square root of a negative 20. So what kind of answers are we going to get here? When you take the square root of a negative number, you get you get an i. It's like any of the imaginary here. So let's go up here. x equals negative 6 plus or minus. Okay, the negative comes out as an i, right? The square root of 20... You can split up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2 times the square root of 5. So this thing here is 2 times the square root of 5, all over 4. Now, can I simplify that? And the answer is yes, you can, because you know each term in the numerator, right, it's got a 2 as a factor. And the denominator is a 2 as a factor, so you can can, you could cancel out a 2 from all those. Just make sure that you never try to do math. Like cancel, it doesn't work in this case anyways, but you can't like cancel this with something that's inside the radical. You can only cancel with something on the outside. So, so this is going to be x equals negative 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 5 over 2. Try this one. You still going? Okay, so try that one.
Any questions? What? Eight, the square root of eight is the square root of four times the square root of two. And the square root of four is two. And of course the negative came out as an I. Why, please? How do you solve it? What do you mean solve it? Well, I mean, this, at this step here, right, I just divided 2 out of all these 3 to get that. But I could also, like, make it two different terms. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. And then I times the square root of 2 over 2 is that. But, so you could write it either way. The top one would have been fine. Yeah. I saw somebody had done that with theirs. Okay. So the discriminant is not the whole quadratic formula. It's just that part which is underneath the square root. And so if you know the value of the discriminant. You, you can tell like how many solutions should you get of which type, meaning real or imaginary. So b squared minus 4ac. And there's three possibilities, right? If the discriminant is greater than 0, then you're taking the square root of a positive number. You should get a real number, right? So you'll get real solutions. How many? Two. One for the plus, one for the minus. Okay. If the discriminant is equal to 0, then you're taking the square root of 0, which is 0. Okay, and you don't get anything different if you add or subtract zero. You get the same thing. That's why you just get one real. Um, if you if the discriminant is less than zero, then you're taking the square root of a negative, which is an imaginary number. Okay, how many imaginary solutions? Two. One for the plus, one for the minus. You know, graphically, what does that look like? You know, if we, if we were going to solve this by graphing, um, then we would you know, look at the graph and look for the x-intercepts. In this case you see that there's two x-intercepts. You know, the, the x-axis is a real number line. That means there's two real solutions. You know, in this case, this is when you have a perfect square trinomial. You just get the one. And if it doesn't cross the x-axis at all, you know, you guys know, because you did polynomials last year, you know, that according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, you should get exactly as many solutions as the highest power of x. And so in this case, we know we get two solutions. Right? It just that if you don't see them as x-intercepts, that means they're not real numbers. They must be imaginary. So even the whole idea that you need the discriminant to tell that, you really don't. You can tell just by looking at the graph right away how many and what type of solutions there are. Right, so these three rules you need to know. One, two, three. So let's use let's calculate the discriminant to tell how many and what type of solutions for this one. So again, all I need to calculate is b squared minus 4ac. And in this one here, I know I can see that the a is 1, the b is 6, and the c is 8. So 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8. That's 36 minus 32, which is 4. So how many and what type of solutions? Right, if you go back to the table, right, if, there, if it's greater than 0, two real solutions. And that one was greater than 0. Two real Okay, try this one. Try do those two. Those are your U tries. Yeah. 
keep doing that same thing. Okay, so it should have been the first one was zero, one real. Second one is negative four, two imaginary. So is there, is there, is it possible to just have one imaginary? All right, what were the three possibilities that we gave you? Two real, one real, or two imaginary, right? So there's no way you just get one imaginary. Again, you've done this before, but when we get to the next chapter, which is about polynomials, um, that's one of the things that helps us to know how many real, how many imaginary, is that you always expect an even number of imaginary solutions. Can't just be one, or three, or five. Okay, last question. Suppose a scoop releases a field hockey ball with an upward velocity of 34 feet per second. The function h equals negative 16 t squared plus 34 t models the height h um, in feet of the ball at the time t in seconds. Height h in feet of the ball at the time t in seconds. When will the ball reach a height of 20 feet? So what are they asking us to do with that 20 feet and the equation? Right. Do I plug in the 20 feet here and here? Where's the 20 feet go? It's a height, right? They said it's a height. You know, when does it reach a height of 20? So no, you don't want to plug it in there. No, instead, you want to plug it in on the left. So this is going to be 20 equals negative 16 t squared plus 34 t. So they want us to figure out when will, so t is what we don't know, solve for t. Okay, well, it's a quadratic equation. We've got a bunch of methods to solve, including quadratic formula, which we just did. So what, what do you think would be the easiest way to do this? How about we need everything on one side, zero on the other? So I'm going to subtract, I'm going to add the 16t squared and subtract the 34t to the left. Okay, now let's start doing the quadratic formula. I mean, I, could I make this easier? I mean, they're all even numbers. You could divide by two. They make the numbers a little smaller. But let's just start. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the quadratic formula anyway. So let's just go x equals negative negative 34 plus or minus the square root of negative 34 squared minus 4 times 16 times 20. Right? All over 2 times 16. So x equals 34 plus or minus. Okay, now we've got to figure out this discriminant. So with a calculator, let's calculate. Um, 34 squared minus 4 times 16 times 20, and you get negative 124. So what kind of answers, if we continue solving, what kind of answers would we get? Imaginary. So, I mean, can that be the answer to when does the ball reach that height? The answer is no. So it must never reach that, reach that height. So this is imaginary. So, never. 
that one right there. Okay. That doesn't matter. So that's what we did. Okay, now that'll go. Today is the 25th, so we're having a quiz. That's the homework if you want to copy it down.